Uh, at what time in the interval is the squirrel farthest from the building? There are several different ways you can look at that. Um, since we're looking at velocity, we know that the area under the velocity curve represents our distance traveled. So uh, we can tell from 0 to 9, uh, if we calculate that area, he has traveled 140 units to the right. Um, then between 9 and 15, his position is 90, because he was at 140, and subtract uh, the distance traveled. And then at 18, he goes a little bit further back to the right, but the furthest he was away was at time 9, and the greatest distance was 140. So what does it ask? At what time? Uh, and how far. So you, you've got to tell what, when it happens and what the distance is. So at time 9, uh, distance is 140. Total distance, we know that that's the absolute value of the velocity. So you aren't going to calculate all that in part B. All you have to do is make this negative distance up here positive, and you've got, you've got part C. Okay, let's look at part D. Write expressions for the squirrel's acceleration, velocity, and distance from the building A that are valid for the time interval between 7 and 10. So let's look at what's going on on our graph between 7 and 10. Between 7 and 10, the velocity is a linear function. So the acceleration is simply going to be the slope of that line because acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. If the velocity is linear, then we know that the acceleration is going to be constant. So what they did was they calculated the slope um, between uh, 20 minus negative 10 over 7 minus 10 to get... Uh, positive 30 over negative 3. So the acceleration is negative 10. Now they didn't, uh, they did not give us any units. So just leave it at negative 10. The velocity uh, between 7 and 10, it is just a line. So you need to find the equation of, of that line. Well, you just found the slope of it. So um, let's see here. I would do y minus, uh, let's say, let's see, 720 is our point. So y minus 20 equals negative 10 times x minus 7. And really, you can leave it, or and actually it should be t, not x, time. Uh, so the velocity v of t is equal to 20 minus 10 times t minus 7. There is no point in putting it in slope-intercept form. Um, you can just leave it at that. Uh, and let's see here. Position. Okay, now, or the distance. Okay, the distance from the building. So we know that the distance at a certain time, or the position at a certain time, is equal to where you started um, plus the integral from where you started to where you're ending up. Well, we want between 7 and 10. So we need to say that the position at some time t is equal to our position at time 7 plus the integral from 7 to whatever t value it is. We need to keep it in general terms because we want any time between 7 and 10 of the velocity function v of t dt. I'm just checking to see. Yep, they simplified all the way. All right, so the position at time 7 we can find. Um, we have not calculated it yet, but we can do that um, geometrically because he starts at building A at time 0. So he starts at position 0. So if we calculate the area under the curve from 0 to 7, we are going to get uh, 120, using a trapezoid there, plus, and they do evaluate it. Okay, they, um, they work it out. So we've got our velocity function here. We just figured that out. Um, now, here is a case where I would said before there's no point in working it out, but it does help you here if you simplify that. 
because you do need to integrate it. Because they didn't say that you could write it using an integral, uh, you need to uh, actually work out the entire process. So let's integrate with respect to t. I'm sorry, scroll up. 9 dt minus 5 t squared, and that is from 7 to t. Let's plug in our limits. Oh, technically you're supposed to change the variables. I never do that. I'm really bad at that. Because you're plugging t in, technically you're not supposed to use t along the way, but I don't think they get too bent out of shape over that. And why did I just write the exact same thing and not plug in 7? Because I was talking about something else. Because <laughs> I was talking about something else while I was trying to write. <clears throat> okay, so let's simplify... Minus, nope, not 360, 630. Uh, that's 49. 49 times 5. 9 times 5 is 54. 5, 254. So you get negative 5t squared plus 90t minus... 265. So you get one point for your acceleration, you get one point for your velocity, and you get two points for the position function. So they probably, I would assume, they don't break it down, but I would think that they would give you one point for this setup right at the beginning. So even if you're not quite sure where to go with it from there, at least set it up, even if you can't simplify it. Probably give you one point for the setup and one point for the fully worked out answer. What and what? Yes, but that would give you the position at time 10. It would not give you the position for any time between 7 and 10. Yes, it does. It says write expressions that give the distance that are valid for the time interval, 7 to 10. the end of part D. From building A that are valid for the time interval 7 to 10. But that doesn't say any specific point between them. I'll get from 7 to 10. But I'm just telling you what they mean by saying that, that they're valid for the time interval. It's anywhere on that interval. If you do the integral from 7 to 10, you are finding the position at time 10. That's not the position anywhere on that interval. That's the position at the end of the interval. They want it to be generic. 